Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another 4k Plex Media server test and that's right today we are looking at the DS1522 Plus from Synology and we're comparing it in terms of Plex 4k performance versus this the QNAP TS453E. Both of these NASes right now at the end of 2022 are vibing for your money. They want to store your data but ultimately when it comes to you wanting to enjoy your multimedia you want to know which one's going to be better suited to 4k. 4k media is way more more accessible and easier to buy than it ever has been and right now media servers have been scaling up their hardware available and their hardware on board to allow you to be able to enjoy the collection of your media from the comfort of your sofa and at the same time you've got plex giving you all that livery the trailers the descriptions the cast the reviews to make it just as a, a big arrival as you can have against the likes of netflix and prime and hulu and more because it's the media you own However, not all Plex Media server NASes are built equally. And with the density of 4K and the multiple formats of audio and video that 4K arrives in, chances are that one NAS will be significantly better suited to your own collection of 4K media than another. So in today's video, we're going to be running 10 individual 4K multimedia tests. Now, each of these tests is ever so slightly different. Some of them will be different weights and formats. Some of them will be different compressions. Some of them will be different uh, resolutions. So throughout the course of these 10 tests, look at the your media that you want to watch on a NAS and hopefully when you look at the kind of different or format your media is in you'll work out by the end which one's better suited to you but why am I comparing these two because they look real similar don't they and if you're going to use Plex you're not going to be that bothered about the software are you well more to it than that because between these two systems, although they both arrive with their own internal software in QTS and DSM, which has its own uh, inherent advantages and disadvantages to the end user, when it comes to Plex Media Server performance, in particular 4K, you're going to see big differences between them. So the DS1522, for example, its CPU, although arguably the more powerful of the two, is the one that a lot of users are slightly concerned with when it comes to Plex, may not be quite up to task. It is the AMD Embedded Ryzen R1600. It's a dual core four thread processor that arrives at a 2.6 gigahertz base clock speed that can be burst when needed up to 3.1 gigahertz. That is a decent little desktop 24 seven efficient NAS CPU. It also arrives with eight gig of DDR4 ECC memory, which is great, but less relevant to Plex frankly but even though that CPU is nice powerful and beefy there a lot of users were concerned when Synology started to make the jump away from Intel processors and more precisely the Intel Celeron series which arrived with embedded graphics or integrated graphics on board integrated graphics is when a CPU has an area on board specifically tailored to deal with these heftier and weightier graphical demands tasks that if you don't use a dedicated tool for them you will use more raw powerful re powered resources to get the job done it's like trying to cut down a tree with a bread knife having the right tool for the job can often save you a lot of time and energy now the r1600 cpu still has a lot of horsepower inside so will it have the horsepower to get the job done regardless of an absence of an integrated cpu now the ts453e on the other hand this arrives with the N5105, a quad-core Celeron-based processor that arrives at 2.0 GHz, so a lower clock speed, that can be burst up to 2.6 GHz. So it needs to burst to go into turbo on demand for a shorter periods to get to the base level clock speed of this. However, that CPU is a quad-core and it has integrated graphics on board. And therefore, the more demanding processes that we may do in today's video, it may do better. So it's going to be a question of the, you know, the tortoise and the hare. It's going to be speed versus acceleration. Ultimately, between these two, it's going to be about how important is it to have the tools for the job or do you not need them if you have raw power now as mentioned the 10 tests that we're going to go through today are very varied in their uh, design some 4k uh, designed files by their very nature need to be changed they need to be converted encoded transcoded whatever you want to call it HEVC, highly efficient video codec or highly efficient video compression depending on what you are and who what you think the acronym is 
that is something that most NAS devices and a lot of hardware clients require to be converted due to the complex licensing nature of HEVC, otherwise known as H.265. H.264, on the other hand, a lot of older 4K media arriving in doesn't have that problem and should play everywhere. But then you've got the multiple different kinds of 4K because they're not all the same resolution 4K. 4K is a broad spectrum. Then you've got different frame rates. Then you've got different formats such as MP4 or MKV. Then you've got bit rates. Bit rates, the amount of data being introduced every second, which in the case of my tests go as low as 16 megabits per second all the way up to 60. So in those 10 tests, we're going to cover the gamut, all of the different variants that you are probably going to have in your domestic on over-the-counter 4K. This is 4K that arrives on Blu-ray discs. This is 4K that you buy in the Google um, store. If you buy it on Apple or on Amazon, when you buy a file and download it, it will more than likely arrive in one of the 10 formats we're going to talk about today, ranging from 4K to Ultra, 4K, Ultra HD 4K and IMAX 2. So without further ado, let's crack on with our results and see how these two NASes fared when it came to playing back that media. Okay, so let's get started with our comparison with a relatively light uh, 12 megabits per second bitrate H.264 test file called Cave of Wonders. Normally designed for bench testing TVs, this file here is not going to be too much of a problem for any NAS really. Yes, it is 4K, but it's one of the lightest 4K files that I've got. It's also an MP4, uh, something I'll talk about later on. But for now, as you can see, this file is playing back very easily on both of these systems. Don't worry about the slight difference in number of seconds we're through the video there it's just different times when the button was pressed but as you can see both of them that line of CPU utilization is very very low the green line representing Plex the red line representing the NAS you can see small increases there on the QNAP side there a lot of that to do with the system being a quad core and a lower um, uh, clock speed we'll talk about that more later on but for now I would say both the Synology and its embedded Ryzen and the QNAP and its Intel Celeron have played back this quite light 4k file file absolutely fine very little difference between them let's move on to the next file now this next file is the trailer for Avengers Endgame it is a 4k IMAX trailer h.264 running at 40 megabits per second so you know quite heavier um, quite a bit heavier I should say but it's also 24 frames per second MKV now what you'll see is a little bump there on each of them just showing there as i started playing the file ignore the left hand side of the chart on the synology that's from a previous test always throughout this video look on the right hand side of the cpu chart and you'll see a higher spike there on the qnap cpu that intel celeron j6412 rather than the cpu there on the ryzen now that or despite there being integrated graphics the reason for this being is just a difference in clock speed and overall efficiency and the distribution of those cores so despite this being a dual core Ryzen versus a quad core Celeron there is a higher clock speed that we'll talk about in a bit on the Ryzen which has resulted in although this file playing natively well on both of them just a higher utilization in terms of percentage on the QNAP let's move on to our next test this is the trailer for Black Panther Wakanda Forever another 4k Ultra HD file but this time it is an HEVC highly efficient video compression or codec 10 bit HDR 32 megabits per second bit rate MKV and immediately look at the CPU there, that rise on there inside the Synology, the R1600, smashed out to 100%, 100% immediately. Whereas the file is playing with no slowdown, no gaps, no problems on the QNAP with its Intel Celeron J6412. The reason being um, that, that this is where that integrated graphics are now being utilized. As it's an HEVC, that file needs to be changed. Unless you have a client side, that is the TV or the phone or whatever you're watching it on, having client side um, HEVC support or having enough power to convert the file, the result is the NAS has to do the job and a lot of users that rely on things like Amazon Fire Sticks will, be encountered, will encounter this problem. So this is a massive success for the QNAP and a failure unfortunately for the Synology. We move forward onto our next trailer. This is the Batman. Uh, this is the 4K trailer, H.264, 8-bit, 32 megabits per second. So same bit rate, but this time it's H.264. Unsurprisingly, once again, we're seeing things run absolutely fine. They're very similar 
uh, relative spikes on the CPU chart. And again, this is where the advantage of embedded graphics is largely abandoned. The, Q, the QNAP's not using it. It can do this job with raw CPU power there. They're, you know, it has the option <coughs> when needed to have the graphical uh, option um, there, but as it's not seemingly needed, the system's not pulling it for the native playback. And therefore, we're seeing near enough identical performance on both of these systems which once again only goes to show that when you don't need transcoding and you don't need re-encoding for a file compression support that um, Ryzen is still getting the job done very very well indeed for mid-range off the shelf 4k files let's move on for our next test another trailer here this is Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker 4K trailer, an H.264 8-bit file at 32 megabits per second, and it's an MKV. Now again, we're going to see very similar mid-range results, although I will highlight the reason I picked this file, as it has quite dense audio. Um, the initial primary stream is a DTS HD um, 5.1 audio, and it ca can also be switched to a secondary stream of eight, um, AC3 5.1. But as you can see, although the spike is higher on the QNAP there, you have to bear in mind the clock speed difference between them and the number of cores. Because although there's four cores in the Intel and two cores on the Ryzen, the Ryzen starts at 2.6 GHz that can be burst up to 3.1 when needed. Whereas the Celeron starts at 2.0 and peaks at a push at 2.6. Consequently, there's just more hardware under the bonnet on that Ryzen to throw at the problem. So in raw power scenarios like this, the Synology and the Ryzen gets the job done a little bit better. Next up, we're going to move on to uh, another trailer here. This is uh, for June, I believe. Uh, and this trailer here, oh no, it's Spider-Man No Way Home. I do apologize. It's Spider-Man No Way Home. This is the IMAX trailer. Uh, and again, this is an H.264, 8-bit files, 32 megabits per second MKV. It's another one with slightly dense audio, but much like our previous test, what we're seeing here is raw power being the call of order for the day. And that rise on, because it's got a little bit more raw power for this process, it's getting the job done with a smaller overall CPU percentage usage. Keyword there, percentage. Um, they may be like they may be identical in actual raw power being used. We're not sure, but in CPU utilization of percentage, uh, the number is smaller there on the Ryzen. So at the very least, if you do have a predominantly H.264 media in your collection, uh, the Ryzen and the 1522 will certainly get the job done very very well for you. But things are about to change as we move to a more complex file in just a moment. And of course, that is the June file that I uh, alluded to just now. This is an Ultra HD 4K file, HEVC 10-bit HDR at 16 megabits per second. And immediately, we're seeing the file play on the QNAP. We're starting to see it go for the transition to the trailer, whereas, whereas on the Ryzen and the Synology 1522, we're seeing CPU utilization hit 100% and the player is just really struggling with this file. It's stuttering and it will stop several times throughout this uh, one minute that we play these files for. Again, if you are using uh, a player device, a powerful playback device that supports HEVC or is powerful enough to handle the transcoding, then you're going to be fine. But some systems such as Amazon Fire Sticks and Roku kits and even some consoles do not even support the effort towards uh, the conversion of the stream, let alone the license for HEVC. And for those, this is what you would encounter if you're using that Synology in that setup. Uh, next up, we carry on with H.264. This is Wonder Woman 1984. This is an 8-bit, 16-megabits per second file. And this time, it's an MP4. I said I'd come back to it later on. The reason I've included a couple of MP4 files in this is a number of users would have purchased Blu-rays over the years that arrive with an additional digital download. Either the digital download <clears throat> is online, or sometimes you get it where you can download it from the disc via a BD player, or it arrives with a USB key that's got your digital movie on it. Regardless, these files are generally always delivered as an MP4 package, as it's more widely supported. MKV does the job better, but MKV does have certain licensing and compatibility issues in some players. 
but once again we're not seeing the cpu too different between these two because we are basing this now on raw power um, but what i will say again is that early spike on the synology at the top left is from another test one that you're about to witness um, and for this test at the very least both of these players handled that 4k file absolutely fine uh, our second to last up an ultimate file the beauty of taiwan and h to evc file 29 megabits per second and this is a 4k ultra hd file here and but man alive that synology that r1600 unless you have got that client side support this is what you're going to get so even if you're using a ps5 with plex uh, we have tested this for another video as it doesn't have hevc support this is what you're going to see because if you don't have support of HEVC, you don't have a powerful enough client side device to handle the transcoding, and therefore you have to lean on the NAS to use its raw power. This file is barely staying outside of the radius on the Synology there in the R1600 in terms of playback, and it's only when things are getting denser um, that you will see anything like that on the QNAP, as in my other uh, tests. But overall, again, the QNAP has won this round, um, and you're seeing the uh, orange circle of doom there on the Synology. Let's move to our final test. Again, this is another 4K Ultra HD file, and our final HEVC file test here. But this one is a 60 megabits per second bit rate just to kind of illuminate uh kind of a more modern this is if you take your 4k seriously when you buy media online and you want top end this is an example of what you would get at 60 megabits per second bit rate um this hevc file is hefty and you're already seeing tremendous delays on playback there on the 1522 but also CPU utilization going absolutely bananas once again there on that Synology. The QNAP, thanks to having that transcoding on board, has that tool in its belt. You may not need this tool if your setup is already geared towards HEVC support and client-side transcoding, but most users do not have, most domestic users do not have those facilities in their home or multimedia environment, and therefore, in far as this test is concerned in those scenarios the qnap and its intel celeron absolutely storms the day let's go through what we've learned today the highlights the low lights and what you need to know so between these two devices again native 4k playback happened for both of these devices if you aren't going to be too worried about conversions your library is predominantly h.264 either one of these NASs are going to be great for a mid-range off-the-shelf 4k nas media server in plex but it's if you need to take into consideration the support of hevc otherwise known as uh, x265 um that's when you're going to need to think about where your money's going because if you go for the Synology you're going to need to either upgrade your multimedia player or change your multimedia in advance and not rely on on the fly transcoding there the QNAP on the other hand it seemed to support both and all the way up to 60 megabits per second HEVC file playback there we saw very very promising results all the way through again when it comes to 4K playback, you've really got to examine not only your multimedia collection, but the devices you want to play them back on, because that can often make the difference between suitability of one NAS from another. And right now, between Ryzen and Intel Celeron, the CPU of importance inside your systems, especially now that it looks like the DS923 and DS723 are going to arrive with that same Ryzen processor, it's going to be really interesting to see um, how people take to this new processor for multimedia, where they spend their money, be it on the client side or the server side. But this has been comparing the DS1522 against the TS453E at 4K Plex Media Server playback. I know these videos are tremendously nerdy and a bit boring, but at the same time, for those of you that take your media seriously, I hope this has helped you understand the better NAS server for Plex to suit your needs. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. If you want to read further information uh, and guides and videos on both of these NASs, they'll be linked in the description, as well as links to if you're planning on buying from Amazon, where you can buy them on Amazon, so we at NAS Compares get a kickback. It doesn't cost you anything, and it helps us to continue with what we do. Otherwise, use the free advice section over on NAS Compares, linked in the description, or the free community support forum, Ask NAS Compares, both linked in the description. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.